has React's U-State hook ever driven you crazy? In this episode of Scout Plus Plus, we're gonna do some experiments to really figure out how this works. I'll see you on the other side of the intro. All right, like I said, we're gonna do a deep dive into React's Use State Hook. This is a super useful feature. It lets you give an individual React component its own state and update that state. Whenever you do update the state, it causes a re-render. Um, so it's super useful. You've probably used it a lot. I know I have. However, there's some intricacies that I have stumbled over. Uh, maybe you have too, and maybe this will be helpful for you to really explore how it works. So first, I have this really simple test set up. I have a component that has a single piece of state, which is count. And then inside the render loop, if the count is less than five, it's going to increase the count by one. So the question is, how many times is this potential side effect going to trigger? Is React going to stop once it gets to set count and then trigger a re-render? Or is it going to go all the way through the component and then render it again? Probably you already know the answer to this. In this case, the side effect is actually triggered five different times. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have something like this, just because you're setting the state and you know that changing the state causes a re-render, it doesn't mean that React is going to abort the render. Any code you have after that is still going to run. All right, so that's pretty simple. Let's move on to test two. Here we have uh, two different variables, two pieces of state, foo and bar, and we have various buttons. Now let's take a look at what we have here. So I have an increment function which is going to log out the values of foo and bar. And then it's going to increment both of them by setting their values. And then it's going to log out the value again. Now we're going to trigger this in three different ways. So we have one button press that's just going to trigger it. Easy. We have another button press that triggers this inside a promise. So it's going to immediately resolve a promise. And then in the handling of the result promise, it's going to trigger that increment function. And then finally, we have a version that does both. So it's, we're going to press the button, it's going to trigger one increment, and then it's going to increment inside of a promise. So let's look at what actually happens. When I press the single button here, we see that the logs, both before and after, all the values are zero, right? And then we have a render where they become one. So again, that maybe is surprising, maybe not, um, but inside this increment function, I've set the value of both foo and bar to plus one. That doesn't actually change the value of these variables inside the render loop. So those variables aren't changed until the re-render actually happens, in which case when we're logging out here, the new values. So again, right now they're one. I'm going to press the button. It's going to, before the increment, they're one. Here, it's going to trigger the state update. And this part is critical. Use state, I really think is a misnomer. It should really be called trigger render with new state uh, because that's what it's actually doing. So even though we've incremented the state, uh, the variables that we set are still the same until the re-render, in which case they come in at the new values. Also note that there's only one re-render, right? Even though We've set state twice, each of them triggering a re-render. These are batched into a single re-render with both variables updated. Now for the promise, is it going to behave the same or is it going to be different? Let's find out. I trigger the promise and what do we get? Here, you see we have two renders now, not just one. When you are triggering new state outside of the render loop and that's what happens when you're inside a promise, right? This re promise resolution, that's happening in a different context. So React doesn't necessarily consider this in the render loop. And so it's taking this call to update the state. The first, uh, the first set foo here updates the state, triggers a re-render with just foo having been updated. After that resolves, it hands control back to the promise function, right? Uh, which is in the middle of the increment where it now sets bar, which triggers another re-render, which happens immediately. So now we're back to foo and bar, both at one. And then the promise function continues, which in this case is logging out the values 
of foo and bar, the foo and bar that are boxed into this promise, not the same as the state that is being passed to the component. So again, to recap, when I just handle the button, all of it inside the component, we get a single re-render, right? That happens after the full increment function. However, if we're triggering from a promise, we get two separate re-renders. Now finally, what's gonna happen when I do both? So again, this both is going to increment once inside the render loop, then it's going to resolve a promise that increments again. And my question to you is, what do you think the value of foo and bar is going to be after the render? Let's find out. It's one. <laughs> And so why is it one? We've obviously incremented twice, right? We can see here I'm incrementing uh, to one inside of the render loop like we expect. Then the promise is resolving. But here it sees that the value of foo and bar were zero, even though we've already set them to one and we've already finished a render setting them to one. That's because when React changes the state, and change these values is not changing the value of these actual variables is rendering a new component with different values passed in so the original variables that this increment function is using from within the promise are unaffected by changing react state so even though we've tr again we've triggered a state update that doesn't necessarily change the value of these variables and so when the promise resolves after the first re-render then the value of foo and bar are still zero so now we're triggering a second re-render setting them again to one which is why we get one and one now if you do want to do something like this instead of passing into your hook instead of passing the new value you can pass in a function that as an argument takes the old value and react is going to provide you the correct value that you can then mutate and return back. So here, instead of just passing in value, if I use set bar with this function and save, now when I press this both button, what's gonna happen? We're gonna see foo increment to one and bar will go up to two, okay? That's because now in the increment function, when we're setting bar, we're first getting the most up-to-date value from React and then passing in a new value as opposed to foo, which is hanging on to this old value from this variable in this function, not necessarily the state. All right, I hope you're still with me. Let's move on to the next step. What happens if you need to be setting state inside a promise, but you also need to be acting on that new value? Because in this context, I don't necessarily know what the value of bar is and what if I need to act on it. One option is to pass that data down through your promise, okay? So in this example, I change increment, it's gonna take data, which is just has a value of foo and bar, and it's going to return that as well. So in my button both, uh, I call increment, passing in the current values of foo and bar. That increment is going to, again, trigger the state update, and it's going to increment both of those values and then return them back. So then I have those new values, which I can pass in to the increment call inside the promise. So this data is gonna hold the new values of foo and bar from the first increment. So then I can act on them once the promise is resolved. So you'll see here, if I press button both, we're gonna get both of these up to two. <laughs> All right, so far so good. One last thing, here we've got an array and an object, okay? And I have two buttons that either modify these <laughs> incorrectly or correctly. For the bad button, you see we're just, to the array, we're adding a value to the end of the array. And similarly with the object, it just has a dot value uh, property, which we're incrementing and we're passing in that object. But if I press the bad button, nothing happens. Why is that? Because you state when you're passing in the array, it actually just has a pointer to that array. So if you're not changing the pointer, then React does not re-render. Similarly with an object, if you're just changing the properties of an object, but passing in to the state update, 
the same object, it doesn't trigger a re-render. The proper way to do that uh, is to create a new array and to send that in or similarly with an object. So here I modify the array and then I inset my array. I'm effectively creating a new array with the same values and passing that in. Same with set my object, this object that assign just creates a new object with the same properties as my object. Now, what's gonna happen when I press this good button, it's not gonna increment it once, we actually get all the values that were triggered when I press bad button. Why is that? When I'm pressing bad button, I'm actually modifying the variables that were passed in as the initial state. And because we haven't triggered any re-render, these just keep their values. So if I do uh, refresh this, if I press this like five times, uh, we get all these values. Now, when I do the good button, it increments by one. Show you again. When I do the good button, it increments by one. When I do the bad button, it doesn't trigger a re-render, but it's still changing the data. And that data is used when I press the good button. So there you go, just a few things to keep in mind when you're using React's useState hooks. Uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget, watch out for tigers. <laughs>